Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gamer Theatrical video, we're going to be tackling and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. So, why am I in front of the camera? Well, honestly, a couple of very interesting tech stories have popped up while I already had everything set up to actually finish off a review, and on top of that as well, I was doing a simplified video, so I thought, hey, it's a new year, might as well. So what two news stories are we going to be covering? Well, the first is Intel's 8809G processor. We have some details regarding its specifications. And then we're going to finish off with something a bit special. That's right, there is a new player in the CPU arena, and their name is Viya, and they are gunning for AMD. So it is the beginning of the year, and Intel's Indian website has outed some technical details regarding the 8809G processor, which of course marks a very interesting development for both AMD and Intel because it does indeed feature an integrated Vega graphics chip. Now I'm going to read these out from my smartphone because I don't want to get the technical details wrong, but it is going to be clocked at 3.1 gigahertz. It features eight megabytes of level three cache. It is four cores, eight threads, and has a hundred watt uh, TDP. But while the memory configuration isn't too surprising, it is dual channel up to 2400 megahertz. What is rather interesting is that it does actually feature two graphics options. That's right. We not only have the aforementioned Vega graphics option, but on top of that, we also have the ability to have the rip roaring power, maybe not so much with the rip roaring power, of an Intel HD graphics 630. In amongst the specifications we don't have, of course, is the amount of HBM2 memory which is on board. It's fair to say that it's unlikely to be more than four gigabytes, and therefore, myself included, suspects it's either going to be a two or a four gigabyte memory configuration. Another thing to bear in mind is this is a KB Lake based processor. This is not Coffee Lake architecture here. Given the information that Intel have released previously, they are going to be utilizing a Core H type of processor. This has a budget of about 45 watts. This means that you're looking at a performance of around 55 watts remaining for the graphics chip. Therefore, the actual GPU is most likely going to be an RX 550 or something around those lines. One of the negatives of it being Kaby Lake rather than Coffee Lake is that memory speeds will be slower. As I mentioned, this memory runs at just 2400 megahertz. Whereas if it was Coffee Lake based, we would see support up to, presumably anyway, 2666 megahertz, which is the same speeds of Coffee Lake running on an i7. Another thing that I found particularly of interest is the fact that it's listed as a socketable desktop processor. And in fact, it's listed alongside other similar socketable options. In fact, there is no mobile processor on this particular table. So what does this mean? Well, it's a bit difficult at the moment to know what Intel have planned, and ultimately we're going to have to wait for CES. It really comes down to the size of the total package, and whether Coffee Lake motherboards could cope with the Vega onboard graphics as well as the CPU. So are we going to be looking at a specific new motherboard slash socket combination, or will it be sold as only an onboard CPU? Lastly, one thing I did forget to mention is the fact that um, while, yes, the TDP of this is 100 watts, the fact is, depending on the workload, um, the power budget will likely be shifted between the CPU and GPU. Obviously, in a gaming oriented task, for example, the GPU would gobble up more of the power available, whereas perhaps on a more traditional CPU-intensive task, the CPU obviously would be able to get a lion's share of the power budget. This will also make the mock the makeup, excuse me, of this particular processor interesting. Are we going to see fewer cores running at a higher clock speed, or are we going to see the contrary, a wider design but running at a slower clock speed? As one can imagine, we're probably going to get a lot more details regarding this uh, in CES, which is going to be taking place in just a few days' time. Okay, on to the second news story of today. Oh, and by the way, I'd like to thank a viewer of mine, also named Paul, for messaging me both of these news stories. So typically when it comes to x86 news, most of the time it really comes down to AMD and Intel. Now don't get me wrong, it's great that AMD are becoming more competitive in the process arena, and one can make an argument that they have indeed given Intel a bit of a kicking in 2017, especially the latter half. 
But that isn't to say that we don't want more competition. And VIA are saying hi. Now it is worth noting that both Fire and AMD have a license to produce x86 chips. Of course, ARM can indeed do so via emulation, but obviously it's not going to equal the performance of a proper x86 based CPU. So the company did release at the end of 2017, the KX5000. This processor ran at a paltry two gigahertz, but did mark an important milestone for VIA. For one, it supports DDR4 memory, PCIe 3.0, and well, just gets them purely on the actual road to producing these type of chips. In 2018, VIA are looking to produce a different series, which is the KX6000. Now this is going to offer a four or eight core variant, but runs up to three gigahertz. Now this is likely going to be a nice compelling competitor to Intel's Gemini Lake. Much the same as the KX5000, it does of course support PCIe 3, as well as DDR4 memory. There were also some details and rumors of the KX7000, which some speculate might actually even take on AMD's upcoming Ryzen architectures. That's right, not the current ones, but the ones that we're going to be seeing released in uh, late 2018 and possibly even 2019. We don't have all of the details for these new architectures um, from VIA, but it looks like it will indeed support PCIe 4.0, as well as, and perhaps most interesting of all, DDR5. Regarding VIA's performance claims, one question does remain. Is this a general sense of performance? So in other words, if you were to run everything from, let's say, a game all the way down to Photoshop or perhaps 3D Studio Max, or is it going to be more tuned for specific purposes? With the KX6000 series, they're going to be utilizing 16nm, which is obviously considerably better than the KX... 5000 series 28nm. I do wonder, however, what KX7000 is going to bring to the table. In my mind, even if these processors don't equal the performance of Ryzen, the big question is pricing, and obviously that is going to be the crux of the matter for many individuals. If we have a third competitor into the market, it'll be curious how both AMD and Intel respond. After all, it's fair to say that Intel, up until a couple of years ago, was just cruising around quite happily. And then rumours of Ryzen started to pop up, and I think most people would agree that there were some doubts in our mind if AMD could really match the performance claims they were making. Well, now we know that yes, they can, and more to the point, they exceeded them. And do remember that back in the day, and this is going back to the 90s, Intel and AMD weren't the only competitors in the market. For example, we had Cyrix, which, for a time anyway, were actually very, very, very popular. There were some issues with it, however, when it came to uh, 3D games. And by the time Quake came along, it was painfully obvious that Cyrix just could not manage to hang with the Pentiums of the world. But obviously, everyone's use of scenarios is different. So the fact of the matter is, for me, whether we do see a performance of the KX7000 equaling the Ryzen 2 or Ryzen 3 range of processors, that's not going to be necessarily the big news here. What is going to be the news is that for some folks, they don't need that level of performance. And of course, if this set of processors hits them in the right budget, particularly for two-in-one builds and so on, and obviously this does come down to power consumption and all the other normal stuff, it's going to be very interesting. So what do you think of today's news? particularly the VIA x86 situation. Obviously, x86 processors are still incredibly in demand. Let's face it, most servers, you're probably going to be using an x86-based processor, unless it's for high-end uh, computing type of things, which in which case you might use IBM or whatever. So, um, one last thing. As I said, this is not going to be a permanent change. Uh, possibly in the future, actually, we will be doing the whole uh, dual camera, sorry, camera situation. But for now, uh, in the early part of January, uh, I just kind of want to test it, see what you guys think of it regarding news videos. And then maybe if I get a really positive reception, we'll look into doing it uh, in the early part of 2017. Uh, sorry, early part of 2018. You can tell that the year's just starting, can't you? So this is going to be a nice set of like me screwing up for the next several months as I like write down the wrong day. But anyway, uh, which is going to be really interesting when I... Uh, 
uh, fill in official documentation when visiting a new country. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Anyway, um, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, comment, subscribe. Uh, obviously, source links will be in the description of the video. And with all of that said, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.